Hi everybody, I'm Dennis Stanley and I'm here to show you how to use Lindsay Jones University and begin a therapist multiple choice examination. Now Lindsay Jones University, just to recap, is an online tool that some people get access to if they have the Lindsay Jones Complete Home Study Package or if they're at school and the school has access to some of this as well. Now, depending on what kind of access you have, the dash dashboard may change just a little bit. For instance, if you have the complete home study package, you'll have this area here for the audio review. Well, there's 21 hours of audio there, and you can listen to, that's basically our home study lectures. But if you're at school, then they may just have, they may not even see this window, and the colors may be a little bit different. But here, as you know, you can start clinical simulations through the CS area, view all, but what we want to do is go to the exams, the therapist multiple choice exams, and then I can just sit here and say view all. But actually, what really happens is that it generates an exam. And so if you're looking at this, you can decide, do I want a full-length exam, or do I want to specify the number of questions, and you can come down here and choose that. Or you can also study by subject area, and that's very handy sometimes when you want to focus on a certain area. Keep in mind that the NBRC actually creates these areas, so we emulate them. These are not areas or or categories that we've made up. When you actually take your exam, you're going to get a piece of paper. It's going to tell you exactly how you did in these areas. So when you do our exams, we're going to gather information on your strengths and weaknesses relative to the same topics that the NBRC is testing you on. And so I'll, sh I'll talk about this in another video, but if you decided that your dashboard says you're starting to develop a weak area in 3A, I could go into 3A, look at every question in the database on that, and sometimes that helps it to click a little bit, so you can review that. Keep in mind, it's not helpful to remember an answer as far as memorizing an answer or a question. We definitely don't write the exact word-for-word -word question on the exam. Uh, we, we believe in an ethical standard there. What we do do, though, is we make sure that we have questions that feel similar in terms of the amount of thinking that they make you do. And so if you understand the, ex the questions in here, read the rationale and you deeply understand it, then you should do well on the exam. But that's, how, that's what you can do to study by subject area there. Now, over here, I can generate a random exam, and it, the computer will just pick the certain questions from certain categories. It'll be a balanced test, but it will make it like the NBRC, but it makes it different every time. Every time I do a random exam, I never know exactly what combination of questions I'm going to get. That's really helpful, actually, for you, for your brain to stay engaged. At, generally, after you do a lot of those, you start seeing the same questions and you start to get it. But some people would like to like to use the static exams, and that's where they can take the same exam over and over. Now, if I took exam number three, it's going to be the same questions every time I go, and question number two is going to be the same every time. What's not going to be the same is the answers. So the answers are the same, but we change their position. So if you go to exam number three, question number two, a might have been right last time, but now we shuffle the answers, and now that's in the D spot. And so we try to keep your brain from memorizing because we'd rather you cognitively think through the issue every time, and that's really what you want to do. All right, so I'm going to say there's a random exam, and we'll say full length, and then we'll just go ahead and start the exam, and this is just going to generate an exam. It happens very quickly. As you can see up here, we're ready to go. Let me just give you a tour here. You have, of course, the question itself, and you can answer these by using your mouse, but you can also use your keyboard. So you can't see this, but I can hit A on my keyboard and it just changes it that way. And then, of course, uh, down here, we have the ability to go to the next question as well. So this is just like the real exam. It operates very closely to this. So I can go to the next question here if I want to. All right. Now, once I, I want to show you that I can also jump to a question. There are reasons to do this. I can just jump to any question that you need to. I'll talk about when you'd use that. Now, look, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to go to the last question. I want to show you something. I'm going to go to question 139. And then if I went to the next question, it would be 140. And now if I hit the next button, unlike a lot of testing facilities, it doesn't end the test. You go next, and it just takes you back to one. It's just a big circle. Not until you come over here and hit exit 
does it do that? But here you are in question one. And by the way, as you go through the questions, it memorizes where what you put. But I can go to two, and let's see, I'm going to put A on this one. I don't know if you can see that. Um, then I'm going to go to B. Excuse me, in the next question, I'm going to hit B. And I'm not really reading the questions, but I'm just putting something. And let's say I get to this next question, and I'm really not sure what the answer is. Here's what you should do. You should definitely answer the question and guess. Just say, I don't know. I'm going to say this is B. And now here's what else I want you to do. You should come down here and bookmark the question. Because there's a way, after you finish the exam, before you hit exit, of course, to go back and find all of the questions that you bookmarked so you can look at them again. But the reason why you want to go ahead and guess right now and not leave it blank is if you do run out of time, at least you've taken a stab at it and you've got a 25% answer. If you do have extra time, we can come back to this question. And so let's just go to the next question. I'm just throwing in some random answers here, of course. And let's say you just cruise right along. And let's say on this question, I accidentally skip it. I'm going to show you a, a trick a little later. Maybe I put my hit my keyboard a little too hard and skipped it. All right, so here we are, and you finally finish. And you go to all the questions. You end up with question, back at question one again. Notice that it remembers what I put. And I can still change it. I can change it right now if I want to. But here's the really neat attribute. You can come over here. And instead of hitting the next question, you can hit this double arrow. And when you hit the double arrow, it takes you to the next checkmarked or bookmarked or unanswered question, whatever it runs into first. So in this case, it ran into a bookmarked question. And this is the one that we bookmarked where we weren't sure. Now that you've come back to this after doing 139 other questions, sometimes you might remember. Oh, yeah, I know this answer C, and so you might switch that. I'm not actually reading the, the uh, question, but so that's how that works. And then once you've finished all that, you can keep hitting this little double arrow until, and now it takes me to the next unanswered question. Well, here's one that I accidentally skipped. And so I realized, oh, I skipped that one. Let me just go ahead. So this double arrow is a good way to make sure, A, just keep pushing through it until you go through all the questions. And if you've answered them all, it'll just go through them all instantaneously. You'll end up back at the same question. Then you know that you don't have any blank questions. And there's another way to do that. I'll show you here. Once you're finished, you can exit. And it warns you now. It says, are you sure? If that was an accident, you can go back to the test. But it says, does say I have 129 unanswered questions here. So you should make sure that says zero. And then you can finish and record your results. All right, and then when you do that, you get this the score exam uh, score set here, and this is pretty interesting. I'll talk about this. If you want to review the exam, however, you would go into this section here. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cover that on another video. Uh, I may show you a glimpse in just a second. But right here, you can see I've, I made a three percent on this exam. Not too good. And what I really want to draw your attention to is this bar up here. I got four out of 140 questions. What I really need to get is above this line right here. If I get in between here, I'm in the green zone, and that means I'm a CRT. But it also means I didn't score high enough to take the clinical simulation, so I'm not RRT eligible. Um, if you want to be RRT eligible, then you need to get here. But you could start practicing respiratory therapy here. Unfortunately, you have to come back and take another version of this test to the NBRC and get past this line to be qualified to take the clinical simulations. So that's kind of good and bad. And people have mixed feelings about this, but that it is only one test. So you don't have to pay for two. Unless, of course, you only get here, then you're going to have to pay for it again anyway and try to get higher. Then you have some information here that will be much more graphical when you actually answer all the questions on how you did in recall application analysis. We talk about that in the home study audio, what that means. And then you can also see how you've done in patient data, equipment, and clinical interventions. Um, those are the chapters of the book, so you can it will help you to know where you should focus. And then here are those categories again. If I come down here and I decide I have a weakness in 2B, 
then it's going to be, it's going to have a little red bar here. I'm all red, of course, because I didn't answer the questions. But if it's green, then you're roughly performing acceptably. Yellow should be cautious, should look into that a little bit. And if it's red, you definitely need to give that some attention. And there's some additional data down here. It judges you in different categories, recall, application analysis, and then also in the areas of the chapter of the book, which, by the way, correlate to the areas of the NBRC exam. And, and then that's how you look at that. Now, I'm just going to show you how to review a test very quickly, but I'll cover that more extensively in, a, in another video. But to review the exam, you just hit right here. It takes you right back to the exam. And then, of course, it looks like the exam. You can use your arrow keys, but you really can't change the answers. So this one says uh, your answer was B, and the correct answer was B, so I got a big check mark. But most valuably, uh, put here is the answer or the rationale so you can read through that and you can go through that.